In the previous video, I showed you how I prepare and grind fat to get ready to render tallow. This is Jamie at Soap Authority, and in this video, I'm going to show you how I melt down the fat and transfer it to containers. This is the process that turns the fat into tallow, which is a clarified and filtered fat that's ready to use in soap making. Now before I melt everything down, I weighed the fat trimmings that I started with. It's really helpful to know how much scrap fat is needed to produce a certain amount of tallow. This isn't always exact or an exact process, but it gives you a better idea of how much fat you need to start with to make the amount of soap that you want. I'm starting with 5 pounds 6 ounces of ground fat trimmings. At the end of this video, I'm going to weigh the final end product to see how much tallow we get from that. Now the tools you'll need to render your fat pieces into tallow are a large stock pot, mine happens to be 8 quart, and then you're going to need a strainer, cheesecloth, a large measuring cup or bowl, and disposable gloves. You will also need several plastic containers to pour the melted fat into. These can be clean repurposed food containers and you will be unmolding hardened fat so make sure that they will work for that. Containers with narrow necks won't work at all for this. All right, we've got our tools squared away. Now let's get started with the rendering process. Now that I have all my fat ground up, I am going to melt it down in my eight quart stock pot on a low heat setting. And to keep it from burning, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add about one and a half cups of warm water. And then I'm just gonna put the fat in there with it. It'll float to the top and that way it's not on the direct heat of the burner. What I like to do is just add a little bit of fat at a time and let it melt and then add a little bit more. So I might add just about half this bowl, let that melt down a little bit and then add the rest of this bowl in there with it. So you can see down in the pot, you can see that the fat has started to melt and I'm going to add a little bit more of the deer fat and then I'm just going to keep doing this until all the fat is melted and then it's going to be ready to be poured into plastic containers so it can harden. Now the fat has completed melting in the pot and what you have left that didn't melt is your meat and it's just like ground beef only it's deer. And so what we're going to do next is we're going to just strain that out with some cheesecloth and a strainer and then we'll have the pure fat that we can pour into containers. So here I have a package of cheesecloth. And I'm just going to take that and I'm going to cut off a big enough section to line this right here, my strainer. And you don't want it too thin because you want to make sure that it does a good job filtering out the little bits that are in there. So I usually at least double it over from the roll that I have. And then I just cut off what I need like that and then I save this for future batches that I do. Um, I always use a clean one. It's not really worth washing it. Cheesecloth is pretty inexpensive and you don't want to clog up your washer with grease. So you're going to line it just like that and then we're going to ladle this fat that we melted right through that. So I'm going to get rid of my spoon here and get a ladle so hopefully that works a little bit better. And then you just pour it all through this layer of cheesecloth and it's going to catch all the debris that is in that melted fat. 
Now the leftover meat that you have in here that's cooked, you can feed that to your dogs, to your cats, if that's something that you like to feed them, meat products. Or you can put that outside for the birds with a little bit of peanut butter and seeds. And if this gets a little bit full, you can go ahead and just scrape that out into a bowl and keep pouring your liquid fat inside your container here. Sometimes I just press this down a little bit just to get more of the fat out of there. And then I'm just gonna scoop some of this out. Put it in a bowl for later. If we had a dog, we used to have a dog. If we had a dog, we'd be feeding a little bit of this to her with her food every day. There's no bones in here. One nice thing about it being deer meat is it's grass fed, no, no hormones, no anything. Just good old grass and whatever else they find to eat like my arborvitaes out front. I don't know about you guys, if you've seen arborvitaes that are trimmed on the bottom and full at the top, usually it's the deer that do that. So you can see here that I have quite a bit of oil and it's all clear of debris, meat, anything that was in the fat. And while it's warm, I'm gonna put this into my plastic containers here. And these are just recycled soup containers that we get at Costco. We just wash them out and use them for projects like this. Now you're gonna have a little bit of water at the bottom of these because remember we put some water in our pot when we boiled down our fat. And what I like to do is I like to ladle off the top and then the last bit that I have that has the water in it, I'll pour that into a separate container. And I'll show you what I do with that once that solidifies how to get that water out of the bottom. So I've cleaned off my ladle right here and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna very carefully just scoop out off the top of this because all the any little debris, if there's anything left in there, which usually there's not very much, it usually settles to the bottom. And you'll notice how this has a slight yellow color to it. Once this hardens, it's going to be a beautiful creamy white. And when we're done with all of this, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna weigh out how much I got because I have a calculation of all my fat that went into my pot and that had the meat bits in it. So we'll see just how much tallow we can get off of one muley deer. Obviously that's gonna vary. But this is such good tallow for making soap. Beef tallow is really great for soap making. Deer tallow is even better in my opinion. It gives you a little bit harder bar. It's a little bit white, wider bar and it lasts even longer in the bath or shower. All 
All right, now that I've ladled most of the fat that has been sitting on top of the container into these containers, so these aren't gonna have any water or any debris in them, I'm gonna take the rest of this, there's a little bit of fat in here and there's also some water and I'm getting down to where I'm having a hard time scooping just the oil off the top. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab another one of my containers and I'm just gonna pour the rest into this and this is going to have some water left over in the bottom. And what we'll have to do with this one is we'll have to unmold it, wash that off, kind of scrape off the bottom, and then we can put it in the fridge. So as you can see in this last container here, you can see the fat is floating on top and there's a darker liquid beneath that. That's the water and gelatin and any other minimal amount of debris that's left over from this process. Now here's the last bit of tallow that has the water in the bottom and as you can see the fat turned a nice creamy white color and we need to get rid of this liquid that's in the bottom especially if we're going to store it and I'm going to show you how I do that right now. So what you'll need to do is put a clean plate in the sink and when you pick your containers, it's good to have ones that kind of taper just to have an easier time unmolding this. Um, most food containers are that way, but just a fair bit of warning, you're really gonna have a hard time getting it out if they're not. So I'm just gonna open this up. And I'm gonna kind of squeeze it a little bit just to make sure it releases from the sides. And then I'm gonna turn it upside down and it should just pop right out. There we go. Lift that up. There's kind of this gelatin blob on there and what I wanna do is I just wanna pull that off cause I'm gonna throw that away. And then I'm just gonna rinse this piece of fat that's solid right now. I'm going to rinse that in cold water, paper towel, dry it off, and then I'll wrap it up in saran wrap and refrigerate it. And the reason I wear gloves when doing this is just because it's pretty tacky and pretty greasy. And it's just easier to take the gloves off than try and wash that off my hands. So I'm just going to paper towel dry this. Sometimes you'll have little meat bits or just little brown spots on here and you can usually just trim that off with a knife and then wrap it up. This one looks really clean so I'm going to wrap it up as it is. There you have it. It's all wrapped up, ready to be refrigerated and then I'll just pull that out and measure off what I need when I go to make soap. So how much tallow did I get? Let's weigh it and find out. I'm going to weigh the tallow, but I don't want the container weight, so I put two empty containers on my scale and use the tear button. Then I can stack my tallow on my scale. As you can see, I now have 3 pounds and 9 ounces of pure tallow. That means I strained out 1 pound 13 ounces of meat bits. 3 pounds and 9 ounces of deer tallow is enough to make 4 loaves of soap using my deer tallow soap recipe. In my next video, I'll show you how I get all my ingredients ready at once to make four different loaves of soap back to back. Check for the link below and I'll see you there.